PokerStars announces the World Championship of Online Poker. WCube continues to be the biggest accolade that every online player wants. Welcome to the PokerStars Arena and the World Championship of Online Poker 2020. It may be hot outside, but inside, it's icy. The midweek freeze is on. It's a 5K MTT. We're following the action, cards up, as they play down to a winner. Hello, everyone. I'm James Hartigan alongside Joe Stapleton. Hello, my midweek freeze babies. Here are the headline stats on tonight's event. It is WCOOP. 59 high, $5,200 to play, 97 unique entries. This is a freeze out, a prize pool of $500,000 as per the guarantee, and a first prize of nearly 120 grand. We really are watching, you know, the top, the cream of the cream here, uh, the top of the top regs. Um, you know, someone like Sam Greenwood, very famous for his live results. He also has that online pay degree. Um, European playing le a lot less live, but has an amazing track record online. I mean, we could talk about anyone here. Zaga as well, who we haven't seen, um, you know, play a hand yet. Very, very strong player. Centaurus. There's not going to be, you know, a, a weak link really at this final table. Max Hendrick with the up and down draw will check raise. And I think the ace of hearts and this nutty gut shot, obviously occasionally like this, you are ahead. Don't think we're going to see Sam fold. <laughs> wow. The guy with the word straight in his name makes two in a row. Yeah, and, and Max Hendricks for Max. loving life. Yes. So the many two pair. Straight. So many pair plus straight draw. So many pair plus flush draw combos to get value from. Straight straights, homie. Oh, Barry oh, Greenstein makes an appearance, and that means they're now chopping. This is so stupid. Yeah, believe me. I'm going to file an official Sam, complaint. Sam Greenwood not loving a chop pot when this money goes in. Such he a frustrating be. river. I might even sing along just to, just to needle Greenwood. <laughs> I mean, when we say everyone, Sam, there's no, there's no asterisk there with certain exceptions. We mean everyone, including everyone. Sam Greenwood. <laughs> yeah, so this is going to be a little bit of a Hollywood before moving in for Sam Greenwood, obviously both players with the nuts. Max just rechecking okay. the board. It is a chop pot and you know what they say. Everyone, Everyone loves, loves a chop pot. pot. <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> no, I just, I just chuck a lot. Smile the hero, ace, queen, and a short Ballin. stack. And Max what? Hendricks here with a decision. I would think that versus the early position raise, this is going to be a hand that you release. I'm not sure, though. It's quite close, quite tough. Um, but Elmer, it's not going to be messing around from that position. Does fold the ace queen. See, we can see this is bad news for Smile the Hero. Uh, we're going to see European fold an ace in the big blind as well. So we're going to be flipping, but these tens are firm favorite. Yeah, lots of uh, queens out too. Smile the Hero at risk and way <laughs> behind. <laughs> Flopped dead. This is hashtag death by quads as we lose Smile the Hero who qualified for $215 and cashes for nearly $16,000. So solid ROI, but now we are down to eight. This is quite, quite remarkable. Centaurus gonna get things going with a very reasonable open. Straight dollar homie with ace king. 
will re-raise. And now Kowalski, ace, queen, suited. Good thing this isn't a bounty tournament or this. <laughs> this would be a lot of chips getting piled in here. Yeah, Kow Kowalski is going to take their time, but will get away from it. I suspected that. But Mr. Tim Calm, Steve O'Dwyer, pocket queens. No queens left in the deck. Not many kings. Not many yeah. aces either. Yeah. I mean, I think I think this is. Yeah, yeah. This is. It's this an is going. And assuming that Elmerix and Centaurus get out of the way, we have the sickest and classicest of races on our hands. And looks like threes are going to, not threes, queens are going to double up with that turned full house. So Steve O'Dwyer now playing a stack of 1.2 million. Kowalski might be tempted to stab to clean up equity. Obviously, really nice if you can just fold two overs. And you're kind of protected here. You have tens, you have sevens and nines, and, and possibly even threes in this situation. Oof. Oh, the five on the turn. That is a set for the chip leader. Yeah, and these are two big, big stacks. Uh, Elmerick's actually starting this hand second in chips. And Kowalski now, with that tentative pro bet, now going to go for some value. Elmerick's not great to have the jack of spades here. I think the bluffs are very frequently going to be a hand like jack 10. But I don't think that you can fold just in case your opponent has 10s or ace-9 or something like that. Nine hundred and fifty-seven thousand in the middle. Elmerix has checked to Kowalski. Kowalski thinking about what sizing. See, with the flush coming in, you've got to ensure that your sizing gets called by a worse hand. We'll go for half or 65% uh, pot, something like that. And Elmerick's now with the decision. This seems like a tough call with the flush try out there. I don't know. It feels like maybe a little bit smaller would have been. Straighty, flushy board. Right and fold. the fold from the Jacks. Uh, Kowalski playing a 100 big blind stack, even with the blinds going up to 17.5K, 35K, putting the pressure on Centaurus and Sam Greenwood. So is this going to be folded to Steve O'Dwyer on the button, who has ace-queen? Yep. And Steve raises to 87,500. Elmerix with ace-three of hearts. This is this is a I say holding, skip the three bet, go straight to four bet. Yeah. Oh, there I'm it not, is. I'm not surprised to see this jam. Um, Tim, so this Count is with all a big into decision. Call. And is it a big decision, Sam? Not because of your hand, but because of the short stacks. Yeah, I mean, it's really a, ba a big problem to be all in here. I think that we're going to see Steve call. I don't know though. It's you. You see that. The, the power of this play, even a hand as super strong as ace queen is in the tank a little bit in this situation because there are such short stacks at the table that flipping here is a disaster for Steve O'Dwyer. And well, he, he will make the call. call. And he's got his opponent dominated. All hot on the turn. Safe river. And that is the double up for Steve O'Dwyer up to 2.3 million. Gets the firework from Sam Greenwood. He is second in chips at this final table, and Elmerix is now a super short stack. So Samuel Vuzden opening here with 10s, and one of the three short stacks at the table. Sam Greenwood moves all in from the button with King Jack of Spades. The chip leader, Fabiano Kowalski, has King Queen in the big. Yeah, I th think Fold. we're going to see a flip here. Flip the coin, 10 on the flop, and it's all over on the turn. Sam Greenwood eliminated in eighth place, cashing for just shy of $20,000. Elmerix all in with ace three. Kowalski in the small blind with queen five. 
Zagazawa in the big blind with Jack 10. Not a lot of big blinds to call off here. Only 150K. Zagazawa makes the call. 10 on the flop. And that will do it for Elmerix. Tommy is gone. Eliminated in seventh place for twenty-five and a half thousand dollars Steve here flopping top pair. And Kowalski with an overcard and straight draw. On a board that's, again, in general, good for the pre-flop razor. They have aces, kings, queens, which the big blind doesn't have. Okay, Steve O'Dwyer improves to trip Queens on the turn. Better than a nine to one favorite now. Yeah, and no spade in Kowalski's hand. You know, doesn't block any Jack 10 suited or, you know, 10 X spades that will always continue on the turn. And for that reason, just check back, hoping to hit a King or ideally a Jack. And Steve, Gonna go for big value here on the river. Overbet to the pot with his full house. Kowalski with just king high. Yeah, I think nine not and king not great cards to have in your hand and will fold. And now Kowalski with kings. Zagazau with ace jack suited. Yeah, and uh yeah, a lot of hands out there. So Kowalski, we know, been playing quite a loose strategy to this point. Zaga, I'm sure, will be watching the stream. I think ace-jack suited with this stat constellation will be just a flat. Yeah, this is what I expected. And now Tim Kaum, again with a situation where could squeeze, will just call. And three-way to the flop. Nine, four, three, just the one diamond. And in this three-way pot, Fabiano Kowalski is better than a three-to-one favorite. That's 140K. Yeah, and this is going to seem strong, I think, to Zaga. I mean, we'll take one off. A little surprised at this. Um... Pat, obviously, Zagazal going to know Kowalski wants tendencies very, very well. And obviously, you know, you do have backdoor flush, backdoor straight draw to the wheel. Nice check from Kowalski one. Hoping Zagazal bets a hand like tens or jacks himself. Oh, come on. On the river. Kowalski one will be hating this river card. So much harder to go for big value against eights or sevens now. Won't necessarily feel that Zaga has an ace, but it's just hard to get called by worse when that ace comes off. Does bet for value and don't think Zaga Zao can raise in this situation. Going to take a moment to consider it. See, Kowalski can still have an ace king or ace queen uh, type holding. I'd be really impressed if Zaga can raise here, uh, can can work out that this sizing is not a hand that beats Ace Jack. Obviously, you don't know what history these guys have between each other. A lot of these top players play with each other all the time. We'll just call. Just call. And we'll move up over the two million mark. Okay, Ace King for the short stack. Yeah, and, and the question is, will Tim Cow open? Because if Steve oh, opens here, is he going to be priced in, I think, against the Ace King. Obviously going to have live cards in this situation. Centaurus delighted to find this spot with such an extreme short stack. Really going to be hoping Steve has a King Queen rather than the two live undercards. But... For Zintaurus, this is going to be a big, big all-in, either to 
overtake European or will be eliminated. 10k pay jump in play. So O'Dwyer priced in, makes the call, as you said, Sam, has live cards, has a live suit, clubs the flush for O'Dwyer on the turn and the elimination of Centaurus, clung onto that short stack for a long time, but does go out in sixth place, cashing for nearly $33,000. Steve O'Dwyer opening under the gun with Jack 10, Jack 8 on the button for chip leader Fabiano Kowalski. And if we get a fold from Kowalski, I'll be interested to see how Philippe Oliveira responds with a six of hearts in the small blind. Flat. And it's second pair for O'Dwyer. Yeah, I mean, Tim gonna, um, Tim Calm or, or, or Steve gonna balance his timings here and then Feels like the king high good enough to see bet second pair as well. Just looking to... F wow, Zaga taking one off with the backdoor flush draw versus the 25% sizing. It's going to be, obviously, Zagazao's avatar, the polarized poker, being uh, the Portuguese stable, him and Rui NF run. These guys you know, deeply forensic approach to poker. And he's going to turn his hand into a bluff on the river. Recognizing that on this run out, he's so, so rarely unpaired. And Tim Count with a good bluff catcher. But where are the bluffs coming from? We'll get a fold. And Zagazal winning a pot there, which very few of us, I feel, would have done. Really, really nice from the Portuguese player. Uh, as I said, you know, when I see him check call there in a spot where I perhaps would fold, I tend to think that maybe I'm doing it wrong. These guys study super, super hard um, of all these situations and uh, know the exact sort of defending frequencies they have to maintain to stop themselves getting bluffed too much. And European... Now, as the short is going to put in the King A, and Tim Cowan will call. Yeah, short stack gets it in. Called and behind and out. Samuel Vuzden eliminated in fifth place. Cash is for $42,618. As Steve O'Dwyer moves up to $2.8 million. Second in chips. Max Hendricks, now the shortest stack. You're obviously a, a, a connoisseur of the avatars, and I think it's nice. You know, Mr. Tim Calm, uh, Steve O'Dwyer, they do tend to call him the sheriff on the high roller yeah. circuit, has the police car. Like it. Issuing speeding tickets if people get out of line, if they try and bluff him too much. And so Kowalski with a kind of medium strength hand here. Um, well, a, a strong hand, but not one you can play for stack so we'll check it over Zagazal with a potential bluffing candidate his flying range going to hit this board really really hard queen jack king queen king 10 and the like and so we'll use this gut shot and back backdoor flush draw to attack Kowalski's air his ace high and his pocket pairs and with that turn card Zaga does outdraw hands like ace four pocket nines and such like would be impressed if he turned his hand into a bluff here but would also be kind of out of line and as i said with a modicum of showdown value and not wanting to get taken off your equity uh he will check back and kowalski with the nut jack no doesn't feel like he can go for value these guys will check it down <laughs> And Kowalski now playing 4.2 million, gets Del Ace King on the very next hand. And Sam, you talk about avatars. Kowalski is going against convention here. Dogs do not normally fare well. We know the power of the cat avatar, but dogs normally do not bring this much good fortune. Yeah. Well, maybe he's going to get undone. Maybe he's going to. Obviously, Ace King, great spot. I think we'll wield the hammer here against Saga's opening. Heads up to this flop here. Zagazar in position against Max Hendricks. Top two for Zagazar. 
second yeah. pair in a straight draw for Hendrix. Sure. And versus the button, this King Queen actually a pretty strong holding. So you have that gut shot to back you up when your opponent does have an ace. And normally your king going to be live as well. But Zagazal, with straight draws and flush draws out there, probably going to pick a reasonable sizing here on the turn, even with the stacks being short. And this is a tough spot now for King Queen. You're really hoping to go check, check on the turn. Feels like it's a little bit too strong to release, but not an appetizing situation. See, some of the bluffs will come from Queen X. We'll call again. And improvement and a 0.5 or thereabouts stack to pot ratio. Yeah, and Zaga with a very clean brick river. No diamond, no straight completion. Will bet for value. Oh, you gotta just let this go, huh? Yeah. So here, the two big stacks collide. Kowalski, a very, very strong top two. And Tim Cam with a spade, with second pair, with some straightening possibilities. Won't be able to go anywhere. And Kowalski picking a big sizing on the flop that's more favorable. These two Broadway flops can actually size up a little bit. And yeah, yeah so... Bit concerning for Queen 10 with Jack 8 and King Jack getting there. Not That's not going to be that much of Tim Cam's range, though. And for that reason, I think we will see Kowalski far again. Obviously, he's hoping that Tim Cam has exactly this kind of combo, a Jack 9, a Jack 10, a 9x of spades. Far's big. 660. And Steve's going to be uncomfortable here, but probably jack 10 makes part of a continuing range and that's a clean clean river for kowalski one and kowalski with two and a half behind two million in the middle yeah a little bit weird with this spr like if you jam for the over bet you are narrowing down what steve can call with them for that reason kowalski checks back but that's a big old hand. Tim Kaum going level with Zagazal as a sort of joint second and third, and Kowalski really pulling away from his competitors. Do you have... Oh, hold on. This might get called. Steve shoving on Max Hendricks, who has woken up with an ace. Yeah, and I think when you're so extreme short stack... I mean, under 10 bigs, this, yeah, we'll, we'll call. There's we'll the call. call. Ah, there kind of was a slight little hold of the deal in <laughs> honor of Steve O'Dwyer. <laughs> Ace deuce holds. Max Hendricks doubles up again and nearly gets himself even with Steve O'Dwyer. Well, here's a hand Zagazar may play aggressively, but who knows? Because pocket tens have to act first. Yeah, Kowalski loving life here on the cutoff with the very, very strong pocket tens. And how does Zagazar value the ace jack suited? Yeah, maybe it just does flat again. Yep, there it is. I mean, the, I don't know strength... if this is good or bad, but this is inclined to my style. It's just to take a strong hand in position. Sure. Well, the strength, of this the, yeah, the strength of this strategy is with 2.2 million to play, it's very hard to get stacked by the out of position player. They've got to put in some big old bets and it's going to be a big alarm bell for you, right? In position, you're much more able to control the size of the pot. And when it favors you and you'll have the strong hand, it's much more easy for you to stack them than for the, it is for them to stack you. So, Zagas are not going anywhere on Ooh, this case 10. And... Yes, Kowalski. Very dynamic turn as well, bringing flush draws and straight draws. So we might see Kowalski size up here. Obviously, I think especially queen... when you get called on that relatively dry flop, you might size up here a little bit too. Yeah, and uh, I think Zaga should realize 
that Kowalski isn't messing around. Obviously, you, you can worry that you're getting bluffed. Wow. You can worry you're getting bluffed by King Jack and clubs and such like. So we'll call again. See, you dominate all those draws. And Kowalski likely to go for it all. Hoping Zagazar has an ace queen that he's flatted. There we go. And As you said, Sam, tough to get stacked here. Kowalski does not get all of it, but Zagazar does drop down to more or less tied for third right now. Kowalski may just rip this. I think a shove is very, very nice. Taking the play away from your opponents. Doesn't know. More subtle than someone like myself. Just coming in for a raise. Realizing these guys very handcuffed in terms of their rejamming ranges anyway. Um, you know. Max going to have to take a flop and hits pretty good here. Jack 10 10. Sixes yeah. have a long way to go. Yeah. And really nice for you on Jack 10 10 because it's hard for you to get bluffed because the 10 X will never ever fold. So Kowalski probably going to stab the flop just to try and clean things up, win it here and now, fold out two over cards. And now the flush completes. Yeah. Now this is the downside to the raising strategy. Obviously allow the big blind to realize some equity. Six required for Kowalski if they do elect to check back. I think bluffing here would be very out of line. Do you, of course, still beat Queen-9 and 9-8? There are a few hands if uh, Max didn't check-raise them. And quite close. Hard to go for value in this scenario because Kowalski will still have you beat, right? King-Jack, uh, not going to bet the turn. King-Jack of hearts or Queen-Jack and such like. But does value bet for a small size. There's some backdoor clubs. 9-7 of clubs, for instance, is going to take this line. And Kowalski unblocks those straight draws. Unblocks clubs. So is going to have a think about it. This may seem like a snap fold, but you're getting an insanely good price in this situation. Will oh, pay. pay off the value bet. Very nice and for Max, Max Hendricks. Hendricks jumps into second place. What do you think is going to develop here? Really going to depend how Max plays the ace and suit. Max going too crazy, yeah. Yeah, but when Kowalski isos here, it's going to be very tempting to limp jam. I myself would be sort of playing this as a limp shove. And I'm, yeah, but these I, are good players. Yeah, it's. It, I mean, Max Hendrick has taken the more conservative road in a lot of instances. Just limp calls. Very nice against Kowalski's actual hand. Doesn't overvalue the A6 as I might be guilty of. And Kowalski with top set, but a dynamic straight, straighty flushy, I believe is the vocabulary we, we here at PokerStars use. And so for that reason, we'll put out a bet. A small bet. Small bet that is almost certainly going to be called by Max Hendricks. Yeah, and Max hoping for a six or an ace, but we can see that would be a disaster. Max does not, in actuality, want a six or an ace. Not an ideal turn for Kowalski. He has got outdrawn by seven, eight, and flush draws. All those flush draws are going to check jam the flop, though, so it's not big, big part of Max Hendricks range in this particular instance. But of course, it does make it hard to get called by. Ex wow. What a river. Oh no. Oh no. Bring out the structure. RIP Max Hendricks. Yeah. And maybe the flush cards will save them. But... Yeah. I think Max going to go for like 400 odd K here on the river. Trying to get a call from King 10. Uh, King Queen type hands. I hope for their sake they don't just jab. Just checks. checks. 
so, so interesting. I can't really believe that Max is going to check shove. Will they get away for with a check call? Kowalski, what size? I think. Wow. Really tough spot. What what sizing will I, I think Kowalski's going to feel like Max has a nine a lot and might size down because of that. No. Ah, wow. Just two times apart. Okay. I'm completely wrong. And Max Hendrick with a super legit bluff catcher here. I mean, I would imagine close to top of their checking range. Oh, my goodness. You're just asking to get bluffed here, too, when you play it like this. I mean, this is kind of what you want when you check the river. You want your opponent to fire out a huge bet. Yeah, I mean, you even have uh, the nut kicker versus some other kind of 6x. Seems super, super hard to fold here. But what a fold it would be if Max can get a weapon. No, can't do it. Don't Doesn't get him. away. Not even a hero call. I'm not going to insult with the hero fail. Just a cooler IMO. Max Hendricks eliminated in fourth place for $55,147. We're down to three. Yeah. And Good job, Killer. Another, another crash here because Zaga with the pocket pair and Tim Kaum with a strong ace. I think this is a trap from Zagazal. Hoping that Tim either Ray's folds some undercards or shoves, uh, you know, low ace X. I think we're going to see a call here from Zagazal. We are indeed like Keats versus Byron. One of these two hands has a slight mathematical advantage. Eight on the river. Adios, Zagazal. Wow. And we are I now mean, heads up. Felipe Oliveira out in third for just over $71,000. GL, GL to the heads up players. Steve O'Dwyer with his second chance at a W Coupe high trophy in under a week. And they're going to squeeze in one more hand before the break. Jack nine, Jack eight. There is a Jack on the flop. Steve O'Dwyer's got kicker problems. With a nine, I think you can consider value betting, but Ooh. doesn't. Checks back and improves. And 175,000 into nearly 300,000. Caught by O'Dwyer, who's going to lose more on the river. Trip oh jacks for O'Dwyer, the full house for Kowalski. Wow. O'Dwyer bets big. Leads out. And Kowalski with a boat. What a great spot. Now just considering the sizing. Trying to identify what sort of hand does Steve play like this way? What will he call? How thin am I raising? And if it's if it's only really, really strong hands, maybe I could go really, really big. Obviously, yeah, 1.9 million. And by the way, Steve. Yeah, of course. Wow. And that is going to be a mountain to overcome now. Kowalski close to 8 million. Well, thrilled to have Maria Ho back with us on the World Championship of Online Poker live stream. Maria, you join us for what could be the closing stages of this event. The 5K midweek freeze down to the final two players. Fabiano Kowalski heads up against Steve O'Dwyer for the title, the trophy, and that first prize of nearly 120K. And I think it's fair to say Steve has a bit of work to do right now. Yeah, I saw that unfortunate cooler for him. And I definitely agree with everything that Sam said, though. I think Steve's just such a resilient player that he's not going to lose hope because of that. And that's kind of the mindset you need to be to fight back from such a large chip deficit. What about the things I said? Oh, uh, did you say did you say something? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just basically backed up what Sam said, but, you know, I you just. <laughs> uh, I, 
<laughs> well, guess what? I'm on keto, so that's delicious. <laughs> Steve betting here with nine high. Queen high is ahead. And Kowalski calls the bet. Count it, Joe. No, it's not. A, it's not. It's it looks not straight. Do not be fooled by this. Yeah. This is not a straight. That's why it was worth counting it out, because you might take one look at it and think, oh, I got there. But no. However, Steve O'Dwyer bluff shoves the river with nine high. And Kowalski folds the best hand. Not surprised to see Steve continue, considering he does have that over card and that backdoor straight draw. I would imagine that Kowalski is just going to call on the flop. And with this turn card, I think that might just mean Steve's going to put the brakes on. I think that there's not that many draws on this flop that he assumes Kowalski is going to continue with. So it doesn't really look like the type of card that I think Steve should bet again, but... In heads up play, it's but what do I know? Hard. He's cheap to go dwyer. <laughs> exactly. I mean, in heads up play, it's pretty hard to assume that you know your opponent will continue pretty weak a lot of the times, but you can't really expect them to fold any ace highs when the board pairs on the turn or any type of seven x holding. So, Let's see if Steve goes for it one more time, does not. Gonna show it down. It's 900k to Kowalski. Well, we can see that the gap is widening once again. Steve O'Dwyer playing a 20 big blind stack opens on the button with fours here. Fabiano Kowalski with nine seven. And with about 20 bigs effective to start, Tim was Steve was trying to raise call it off with a pair like fours, but he didn't get Kowalski to bite there. And instead gets outflopped and outturned. So this is trip nines now for Kowalski. I mean, if you're going to make trips <laughs> three times in two orbits, basically, I think you're going to be very tough to play against heads up. Yeah. Three hundred and twenty thousand. That's almost full pot from Kowalski. Steve's and for Steve, he, yeah. And the problem, though, is Steve knows that he'll likely be facing a bet on the river. So when he calls the turn, there's not a lot of cards that can help him make or have an easier decision on the river, especially not something like the tennis spades. So. It is nice that Kowalski decides to check here, though. Oh, I'm calling it, Joe. Steve O'Dwyer is in the danger zone. Danger zone. <laughs> it's top pair versus bottom pair on this flop. Kowalski being a little tricky with it. But not going to get Steve to bite. But here, Steve turns an open-ended straight draw. So I'd imagine Kowalski is going to try to go for value at this point And going to face some type of resistance from Steve, whether it be a call or a raise with that added straight draw. It's got to be so frustrating for Steve. I mean, he's had so many hands that are like, usually like pretty good heads up. Hands that, you know, yeah. can show down as a winner and just every time Kowalski's had him. And he, Kowalski's had hands that Steve's done well to not try to bluff, I think, also. Yeah, basically, if Ludo had Steve's hands, <laughs> that it would, would be, be a totally over. different story. Yeah. A very different narrative as Kowalski bets his pair of kings on the river, 280 into 580. Steve, 750 behind. He's dropped below the 10 big blind mark and will be ridiculously short if he calls this. Doesn't. Holds on still to the few sure. chips he still has. Jack nine on the button for Kowalski. Janina. 
Shoves on O'Dwyer, who calls all in with Queen Deuce. Queen oh, on the flop. flop and diamonds. And that <laughs> is the flush for O'Dwyer. It was also the straight for Kowalski. <laughs> so Steve gets the double up. <gasps> guys, 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 guys. Ace 10 versus nines. O'Dwyer raises this after Kowalski just limped on the button with the ace 10. And this is going to go all in pre Kowalski limping to shove over or call off against Steve. And if Steve calls all in, we'll be off to the races. It is a flip that Steve O'Dwyer will need to win to survive. It's a 10 high flop. O'Dwyer needs a nine. Nope, it's over. And it's Fabiano Kowalski who takes down the 5K midweek freeze. We have a champion in this $5,000 WCOOP event. Fabiano Kowalski takes it down for $119,483. Steve O'Dwyer denied his second title for the second time this series.